Are you ready? Let's do 4.4. .4. We want to prove that tri uh, triangles are congruent by SSS. So what does that mean? Is that like some German secret service? No. I'll tell you what it is in just a minute. Our essential question is how do I use the side lengths to prove that triangles are congruent? You will remember back here in 4.2 we said that in order to prove, in order to, or what it meant when we said that two triangles are congruent is that the three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent and also the three pairs of corresponding sides are also congruent. So that's six different things that we have to compare, actually 12, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve different separate things that we have to measure and then compare with each other in order to confirm that these two triangles are um, congruent. That's just a lot of work. There's got to be an easier way. And a matter of fact, there is. And one of those theorems that enables us to be able to prove that two triangles are congruent is the side 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 congruence postulate. It tells us that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then those two triangles are congruent. That's pretty cool. So all I have to do is just measure six things now, three pairs of things. We don't even have to measure the angles at all. It, who cares what, well, it's not really who cares what they are, but I don't need to know what the measure of the angles are in order to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Let me show that to you. That if I have uh, two different, here's uh, uh, a pair of sides, or three sides, and you notice the, the, here are the same three sides. And no matter what I do, here's uh, one arrangement. Let me flip this guy around and move this over here and bada bing, I have created a different arrangement. So are these two triangles congruent? Well, yes they are. Because if I was just to rotate this guy around and then reflect it over there and then translate it here, then you can see that no matter what I do, uh, these two triangles will always be congruent. There's no way that I can mess this thing around and put it in a different order and create a different triangle. It is always going to end up being a congruent triangle. So that is SSS. -S -S. That is really convenient and helpful for us. So the way you think of that is you look for one pair of angle or sides, sides that are congruent. And let's do this. Let's label just one of the triangles. So let's put big old fat S on there because I have one pair of sides that are congruent. I have a second pair of sides that are congruent. There we go. And I have a third pair of sides that are congruent. So again, notice how I am just labeling uh, one of the triangles here with uh, the pairs of things that I have that are congruent. One pair, another pair, and a third pair of sides that are congruent. So I have here SSS, and that is sufficient to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Let's put that theorem to work. <clears throat> here in your book, they give us an example and we have to write a proof and we are given this information which is replicated here in our diagram the same information that we have in the diagram and they want us to prove that these two triangles are congruent so they're telling us here that this side kl is congruent to uh, lm because i have the single tick marks i also have that uh, written out over here. So I have one pair, I put a big old fat S there, one pair of sides that are congruent. Here is another pair, see these are double tick marks, so these two pair of sides, or this one pair of sides, 
these two sides are congruent with each other. So I'll put another uh, big fat S. Remember, I'm only labeling one of the triangles. Don't put another big fat S's over here. Uh, that would get you confused. So I have two pairs of sides that are congruent. Huh, we need three. I need three sides or three pairs of uh, sides that are congruent with each other. So where is the third one? Well, looking at this left triangle, I see I have LM. And on the right triangle, I also have LM. So how is it we can say that segment LM is congruent to segment LM? What property of equality would we use to be able to say such an amazing, astounding fact as that? Of course, duh, it's reflexive. This is the reflexive property. So based on the reflexive property, this side for the left triangle is congruent to the same side for the right triangle. So I do have SSS that is sufficient to prove congruence. So these two triangles are congruent. But now hold on. Make sure that you're careful when you draw when you write your congruence statement because you can't just throw down any three letters in any order here. Yes, I know that. So here I have LKM, LKM, all right? And I know that I'm going to use these three letters on the right side, but the order really does matter. So one way of thinking about it is I start at L and I'm going through this single tick mark side and over to K. So let's start at L and I'm going through this single tick mark side over to N. Okay, that works. And then from K, I'm going through a double tick mark over to M. So going from N, go through a double tick mark and that leads me over to M. And then M is swings around to uh, L and M swings around to L. Yep, this works. So the order really does matter because we're saying that angle L on the left hand side here is congruent to angle L on the right hand side. And also the angle K is congruent to angle N, right? Because they're both in the second position. See how that works. Okay, you're ready. Let me see if I can help you any farther. Here they say, decide whether the congruence statement is true. So here you have a congruence statement and you have to decide, is this congruent statement true? First of all, are these two triangles congruent? Do you have side, side, side? And so if so, label, or only label one of the triangles. So put your big old fat S here, another big old fat S there, another big old fat S there. And so it looks to me like you do have side, 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 which is sufficient to prove congruence. But now, is this statement um, accurate? You need to decide that. Does uh, angle D uh, correspond to angle H? Does angle F correspond to angle J? And does uh, angle G correspond to angle K? And so forth, okay? So, so you tell me, are these, are these two uh, triangles congruent? And if so, what's your basis? What's your reasoning? And the only reason we have so far is uh, side, side, side. We'll have more theorems in just a little while. But right now it's side, side, side. Or that you have to go through and do all the corresponding sides and all the corresponding angles. All right, do the same thing with this one. And notice we have uh, lengths here. So do the corresponding sides. Are they the same length? And so forth. And also here. So go ahead and pause the video and take off and do that on your own. Strain, not strain your brain, but but um, I don't want to say strain your brain, but exercise your brain. Let's do that. Exercise your brain. Go ahead and pause the video, please. Okay, now we're back and we're doing, we're getting you ready for example two or number four here on your notes, which is example two that will help us to get ready for that uh, from the book. <clears throat> so they're asking us, uh, which are the coordinates of the vertices of a triangle that is congruent to triangle P, Q, and R. Okay, so we want to find which one of these here we have three coordinates and 
we want to find which one of these uh, set of coordinates would give us a triangle that is congruent to this triangle. And the way we do that is first we need to figure out the lengths of the sides. We're going to use SSS to prove congruence. So uh, let's figure out the lengths of the sides of this one that is graphed already. So what's the length of this side? That's easy. You just count the blocks. One, two, three. Well, actually, well, hold on. Oh, okay. We're, we're okay. I was looking at this one and it said uh, uh, two. So I was thinking each block is worth two, but no, that's the second block. Each block is worth one, as this one says down here. So this side over here is three. The length is three here. And one, two, three, four. This length is four. And what kind of a triangle is this? Well, because this is parallel to the x, I'm sorry, the y axis, and this is parallel to the x axis, therefore this must be a right angle. So this is a right triangle. And you know, you're probably already saying it to yourself, come on, Mr. Evans, get quicker about this. This is three, this is four, so you know that this is five, right? And that's based on the Pythagorean theorem. You remember the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And that is the basis for your distance formula. Here is your distance formula. So this a, it would be like uh, the distance between these two points, saying x2 minus x1. In this case, would be uh, 4. Right there, we got the 4 squared. And then the y2 minus y1. That's determining the distance between uh, those two points. We either count the blocks or we could figure out that y2 is 4, y1 is negative 3. Oh, they're using a different uh, uh, points here. So these points, uh, these coordinates do not match with what's in the diagram here. But same concept. And it's going to give you, uh, this is going to be uh, 3 is the length that's here. And so 4 squared, which is 16, plus 3 squared, which is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So remember how that Pythagorean theorem works, from, which is the basis of the distance formula. And so now when you come over to this, what you want to do is plot these three points, K, uh, what is this, uh, J, K, and L plot those three points and figure out the distance or the length of each of those three sides. And then also plot these uh, points, R, S, and T, and figure out the lengths of those three sides. Hopefully you can count some blocks. Looks like you can here. Yep, you can count blocks. But you will also have a diagonal. So figure out what the length of that diagonal is for this triangle and also for this one. And of course, you know the diagonal is your hypotenuse. Okay, and so go ahead and pause the video and uh, do that problem. So I need to see some, some distance calculations going on over here and having your two triangles there. So prove whether or not those two triangles are congruent. And then lastly, this uh, SSS is very helpful for construction. Here you are wanting to, to create a bench, for example, for these big old fat uh, football players that weigh a lot. And which of these benches would be sturdiest for, and it would hold the most weight? And you might be thinking, well, it depends on what the strength of, of this is. Well, let's assume that the strength of these boards going around the outline here is the same. And the answer would be that this thing would be very fragile, very easy for it to flop over. In other words, like this, if you, if you only have the box around there, this thing could flop over very easily. Because a quadrilateral, uh, having uh, four sides like that, can be in different shapes. So what you want to do is you want to create two triangles by adding your diagonal. Because if you create a triangle of three particular sides, that triangle cannot change. As long as you keep that, those lengths the same, it's impossible to change that uh, triangle. I can move this around, put all this kind of pressure on that thing, and this uh, will preserve and be congruent with uh, what it was before. There's no way that I can still preserve a triangle with these three sides 
and have it be a different shape. So putting a diagonal or a cross beam is the term they use in construction. If you put a, a diagonal cross beam um, across your uh, rectangle here, that makes this very, very sturdy. And so architects and builders know that geometric principle and now you do also. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you. That's it, isn't that nice? Nice and short. Uh, have a good evening, have a good, a good day, and look forward to seeing you in class.